is the News at 5. Happy New Year and welcome to the News at 5. I am Joe Paris. The 208 will return tomorrow with Brian Holmes. But speaking of politics, Idaho lawmakers are ready to migrate to Boise for the start of the 2024 legislative session one week away. And party leadership already has their top priority set for the session. New Channel 7's Andrew Bartline heard from both sides of the aisle today in Boise. Andrew, a lot of talk about helping the everyday Idahoan, I understand. Yeah, it's a similar message, but a very different idea on how you would do it. When you talk with both parties, they say they want to make life better for the average Idaho family as to what moves that goal forward, well, then we start to see them diverge. It takes time to get back in the swing of a daily routine. Yes, that's true. And Idaho lawmakers only have a few more days to iron out the wrinkles. <laughs> Representative Megan Blanksma says her priorities are focused around supporting families. That could be simple as tax relief or complicated as revamping one of the state's largest agencies the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare. And try to make it more um, friendly for families to work through the system when they need to, try to keep them out of that system if at all possible. Blanksma points to the state's overwhelmed foster care system, department-wide inefficiency, and spending, particularly the increasing cost of Medicaid expansion. Right now is so completely bloated. We want to make sure that we're controlling the budget and not letting it get out of hand. With that huge influx of federal dollars, um, it, it makes things look a little different when they, they go away. But on the other side of the aisle... Safeguarding Medicaid, very important. Senator Melissa Wintrow is far from concerned. I pay federal taxes and state taxes, and I want to see my federal tax money go to work in my state for the betterment of my citizens. And she suggests the state does that by further investing in school buildings. We know we're almost a billion dollars in deficit in the hole that would even just keep our schools maintained. Wintrow adds her party expects to play a defensive role on many pieces of legislation. We will always stand firmly for personal freedoms to make sure that the government is not telling you what to read or telling parents how to raise their kids and what kind of decisions they have to make for them. And when you're in the majority, you're, you're about problem solving because you have to. But when the sleeves are rolled up, there's no telling what will unfold. And there might be more. I, you, you never know what comes up. Hopefully nothing will come up in March. And the quicker work gets done. <laughs> Tomorrow. No. The quicker lawmakers get to go home. We don't need to be sitting around the state house spending taxpayer dollars if it's unnecessary. Representative Blanksma says she's in contact with the interim director of health and welfare right now, who I understand recently got into that position. And she says he has interest in making that agency more productive. She adds the majority party has legislation ready and they should not be wasting time at the start of the session to get going, Joe. Mm -hmm. As for the Democrats, they use this term success on the margins. What that boils down to is their votes are often needed to pass budgets. Medicaid sticking on that topic year after year. It's been the Democrats that push that budget through and then their votes can sometimes block bills when the majority party is split. So um, success on the margins, again, is something that they're looking at. And I know a storyline in 2024 people will be following is with Dave Jepson retiring from the Department of Health and Welfare. It will be interesting to see what changes unfold there. All right, Andrew Bartline reporting for us here tonight.